to our internet guests, again, we are just so thankful to have you join us and just uh, want to thank you for the comments uh, that, that you uh, share with us. And if you haven't already, go down and subscribe to this cast so that when we come up, you'll be notified. That way you won't miss us. And I also want to encourage you to, to continue to share with your friends, your families, your Sunday school classes that we're here. So they too can join in and be blessed by the word of God here at World Class Sunday School. What's wrong with the people today? Lord, again, we're so grateful for this opportunity and time to share in your word. We pray that our hearts and minds are, are fixed on you, that we have a desire to learn what you are teaching us through your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks and praises always. Continuing in our one a quarter, where we're talking about call in the New Testament. And here in uh, Unit 3, we've been discussing the call of women. And today, uh, the title of our lesson is Called to Testify. We're going to see a, a woman, a Samaritan woman, called to testify about the salvation of Jesus Christ uh, and, and the impact that her witness had on others. And how this lesson will show us how, how important our witness is. Uh, we have three outlines that we're going to follow. The first is a woman's declaration. And uh, we're going to be looking at in uh, the Gospel of John in chapter 4. So the first outline is coming from John, the fourth chapter, verses 25 through 30. Second outline, uh, a crop prepared. John 4th chapter verses 31 through 38. And the third outline is a community transform. John 4th chapter verses 39 through 42. So uh, we're going to start this session by talking about the relationship between the Jews and the Samaritan in Jesus' day. Uh, after, after the division or split of Israel, at the end of King Solomon's reign, Israel split and ten tribes went to the north and they were known as Israel. And the other tribe went to the south. They were known as Judah. Uh, because of their disobedience and idolatry, God's judgment came upon the northern tribe, Israel. He allowed the Assyrians to, to destroy Israel because of their sin. And uh, many Jews were taken in, into exile. Those that remained the intermarried with outsiders who were brought in to work the land. By the time Jesus arrived on the scene, the animosity between the Jews and the Sumerians were, were at a great height. But these, when, uh, when those outsiders came in and the Jews started to intermarry with them and their offsprings were called Sumer Sumerians. And the animosity had, had grown between the Jews and, and the Sumerians by the time that Jesus came on the scene. And so, uh, 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 the Jews would, well, they had no dealings at all with the Samaritan. And they would go out of their way to avoid going to Samaria. They would bypass it when they would go from, from uh, Galilee, when they would go from Galilee to Judea, or uh, from Judea to Galilee. Uh, and that here, when we look at uh, the fourth chapter of John, 
we are verses 21 through 24, which is not a part of our printed text. We read an uh, encounter that Jesus had with one Samaritan woman. Now, because of, of their custom, uh, because of their hatred for one another, uh, and, and Jesus had to rebuke his disciples at one point but because of their hostility toward the Samaritan. You find that in uh, Luke, the ninth chapter, verses 55 through 56. But here, here in uh, John, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 24, let us look at the, the uh, encounter or the conversation that Jesus had with the Samaritan woman. Okay, and, and uh, at this, uh, when Jesus was leaving uh, Judea, going to Galilee, you read it in John the fourth chapter, verses verse four says, it, it tells us that Jesus must need go through Samaria. Now this this was not custom for Jews to do. Okay, so that brings us to where we are in our lesson. So we're going to look at the conversation that, that transpired between Jesus and the Samaritan woman. And, and we'll see that it starts with on, the, on his journey from when, when Jesus was going uh, to Galilee from Judea, the Bible said that, that he, he was weary and he came to, when he came to Samaria, uh, he came to a point uh, at uh, Jacob's well and where this Samaritan woman came to draw water. Okay, now Jesus asked her for a drink. And it, 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 this was not customary. And she, she asked him why would he, a Jew, ask her for water. And so they got into a conversation about the living water. And it, what Jesus was doing was really revealing himself to her. Uh, and then the conversation went from the living water. Then it got personal. Jesus told her about her personal life. And, and then it, the conversation moved from her personal life and then uh, he, it, they talked about worship. And she was talking about wh how important it was, the place of worship. But Jesus was talking about the importance of how to worship. And then uh, he, he said, he made a statement that, that there will come a time, and that was the time for the Messiah to come. And he said there would come a time when the, the place of worship would be irrelevant. But all that worship, God must worship him in spirit and truth. And then the, and then the, uh, the Samaritan woman made a statement that she said, I know that the Messiah is coming. And uh, that, well, actually that brings us to the first outline in our lesson a woman's declaration, and we're going to begin reading here at verse 25. It says, The woman said unto him, I know that the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he has come, he will tell us all things. So, so both the Jews and the Samaritans were looking forward uh, to the coming of the Messiah, or Christ. The Jews were looking for a conqueror who would come and overthrow the Roman government and take them out of their oppression. But on the other hand, the Samaritans were looking forward to a, uh, a teacher prophet. She said that, that he would come, and when he, when he would come, he would tell them all, all things. And so uh, the Samaritans were looking for a teacher prophet that would tell them all things that they would uh, rectify their mistakes and, and 
defects and put an end to their uh, disputes. And, and so they were, they were both Jews, I mean, both Jews and Gentiles were looking forward to the Messiah, but they had a different idea of what the Messiah would be like and what he would do. And then we read on to see here in verse 26, Jesus said unto her, now all the time that the conversation was going on, Jesus was revealing himself to her. And she even mentioned or uh, said it at one point that she recognized him as, as being more than just an average Jew because she referred to him as being a prophet. But here in verse 26, Jesus says to her, I to speak unto thee am he. Okay, back in verse 25, she says that she knew that the Messiah was coming. And here in verse 26, Jesus is telling her that he is the Messiah. Okay, now, and, and to, uh, the, to, to, we're going to look at the woman's reaction in, in verses uh, 27 and 28. But, but here in verse 26, we see his, we see his re disciples returning. Okay, let's read that. And upon this comes his disciples and marvel that he talked with the woman. Yet no man see it. What see it thou? What seek it thou? Or what why talk it thou with her? So so his his uh, disciples had gone into the city to buy food. When they returned, they found Jesus having a conversation with the Samaritan woman. Now they wondered why he was talking with her, but, but none of them asked him why. Okay, and so now let's, let's go over to verse 28 and 29, and we're going to see the woman's reaction. When Jesus revealed to her who he really was, that he was the Messiah, the one that, that she had been looking forward to, here in verse 28 and 29, we see the woman's reaction. What did she do? The woman then left her water pots and went her way into the city and said unto the men, she went to the men, she said, come see a man which told me all things that, he, uh, that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? So, so her reaction was to, to run and tell it. When she, when she realized that Jesus Christ was the coming Messiah, her reaction was to run and tell it. And, he, he, and she, she baited those men that she addressed to come and see. She said, come see a man which told me all things that, that ever I did. And here we see the conclusion. She said, is not this the Christ? She wasn't, she wasn't asking a, a question, but this was her conclusion about this man that, that she had been talking to, that he was the, the Christ. He was the Messiah, and he was the, the promised one. Then they went out of the city and came unto him. So... Uh, so uh, she had, this, this uh, Samaritan woman had great expect expectations of the Messiah and was ready to uh, receive instructions from him. Christ will manifest himself to those who with an honest and humble heart desire to be acquainted with him. He, he's ready and willing to reveal himself. But our heart has, you have to have a humble heart and be and ready to receive him. And she was, she was that. And uh, really now at this point, when he, when he revealed, when Christ revealed himself to the Samaritan woman, all she cared about at this point was sharing her testimony. 
Because and, and when we read it, we see that every, she dropped her water pot. She forgot about her water pot. She forgot about her reputation. She forgot about uh, that Jesus was a Jew and she was a Samaritan. And what she, all she wanted to do was share with those in the city that she said, come see a man. So, and so she just wanted to share her testimony. And now she had, she had a strong testimony, a convincing testimony, because we see in verse 30 where it says, then they went out of the city and came unto him. And so her testimony was convincing. And that's, that's where our testimony has to be. Uh, uh, we, we don't, sometimes we just don't realize the value or the impact that our testimony have on other people. But here we see that she, she was convincing and she, she, all she did was, was say it, told, all, all, all her testimony consisted of was she, she was just telling them what Christ had did in her life. And that's all our testimony uh, have to be. We don't have to drum up anything uh, to try to make it sound spectacular or whatever, but just tell the truth and tell what Christ has done in our lives. That's, that's our testimony. And it had an impact on those in, those in the city, and we're going we're to see the impact that her, her testimony had. It said here, it shows us here in, in verse 30. It said they went out of the city and came to where Jesus was. And that was because of her testimony. Okay, now here we, we, we look, uh, we look in here in the, in the first outline and we see the impact of the declaration of the Samaritan woman when she testified to those who listened, uh, those in the city. And, and, uh, when she revealed that, that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Savior, had come. Now we're going to, we're going to move to the second outline, and we, we're going to talk about here a crop prepared. And we're looking at the fourth chapter of John, here verses 31 through 38. Okay, the first thing we see here is a spiritual food. Okay, now the disciples had gone away, gone into the city to buy food. And when they, uh, uh, when they got back, they found Jesus uh, having a conversation with the Samaritan woman. Now here in verse 31, it says, In the meantime, while the disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. They were, they were compelling him to, to eat. And Jesus' reply was, it says, but he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, has any man brought him out to eat? And so they was asking, uh, did someone else bring him something to eat? We know he haven't had anything to eat. And when we offer him food, uh, he, he's refusing uh, because Jesus knew what was coming. And, and it, see, it goes on to say here, uh, he, he, he uses, we see he's going to use a metaphor of sowing and reaping. And verse 34, he says, Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Jesus never lost sight on the assignment God had given him. He, he always stayed focused regardless of, of what, what was going on. And so here we see rather, rather than eating uh, sp uh, physical food, Jesus' focus was on the spiritual. And, and uh, it, it, he, said, he, said, he, he said his meat was to, to do his, the will of his father who has who had sent him. And uh, it goes on to say here in verse 35, 
35 says, Say not ye that they are four months, and then cometh harvest. Okay, here Jesus is using the metaphor of planting and reaping. And he's showing the disciples the process of how a farmer sows a seed, but then he has to wait a period of time in order to harvest that seed that he has sown. Okay, so, but here G, uh, Jesus is, is talking is, uh, about a spiritual harvest. Okay, there's also a process to a spiritual sowing and reaping. But here, uh, Jesus is showing his disciples that they don't have to wait for the, the process of the seed to germinate and then produce the fruit in order for harvest. On, on the spiritual side, he's saying that the fruit is already ready. There's no waiting period. He, but behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he uses metaphor as a farmer planting a seed and waiting for the harvest. But the, the field of souls are ready to harvest. That there's always the season of planting spiritual seeds. And that, that's pretty much what, what this uh, section is showing us. And, and then it goes on to talk about the reward uh, of the harvest. Here in verse 36 it says, And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gather fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. Okay, so, so the process, uh, it, there, there's no competition when it comes to sowing and, and, and reaping spiritually. The process uh, is that, that we, we are all a part of the process is, is what it's showing us. And herein is that saying true. One soweth and another reapeth. It, uh, it takes all of us working to, it takes all of us working together to bring about the harvest. And then uh, Paul says uh, uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and 6, he says, I sow, Apollo waters, but God gives the increase. And so when we all are working in the process, in this process of spiritually sowing and reaping and then uh, then when the harvest come then we all can rejoice because we all have a part in in sowing and reaping uh, spiritually then verse 30 said uh, I send you to reap that whereon ye bestow no labor other men labored and ye are uh, entered into their labor. And, and, and we just, we just move the process along. And, and the, the work that others have started, then we, are, we feel in, we are part of it. Uh, and, and when we do that, when we work together in this process of spiritually sowing and reaping, then, uh, when, when God, we, we, uh, we plant and we water. Some plant, some water. But ultimately, God gives the increase. And so the process, the process, we're all a part of the process. And we're all a part of the reward of the rejoicing uh, when the harvest comes in. So, so when we witness to, to others, uh, we might be the, the first uh, of the process. We might be sowing the seed. Or we might be later on in the process. We might be watering. But when God gives the increase, then we all rejoice. Okay, now, now we move to, to uh, the third and final outline, a community transform. 
It says, uh, after, the, after the Samaritan woman rushed into the city and gave her testimony, it, it says, and many of the Samaritans of the city believed on him, talking about Jesus, for the saying of the woman, which testified, he told me all that ever I did. And uh, she, just, she just told what, what Jesus did for her, and that, that's, that's, that was her testimony. And that's, that, that's our testimony. And then, uh, so when the Samaritans were come unto him, you know, they all went out to sea. They uh, besought him that he should tarry with them, and he aborted there two days. Okay, now, when they went out, some already believed, but there were some who didn't believe. And imagine being at uh, Jesus' feet for two days. Now, they, they didn't have the canon of scripture like we have. We can be at Jesus' feet all, all the time that we desire, and which is a, would be a blessing to us. Okay? And so, so they, the Bible, is, to us, we are sitting at Jesus' feet. And then it said uh, the people believed, and many more believed because... Uh, of his own words because of the words of Christ was preaching and teaching and and more believe not because of the saying uh, it, it says and many more believe because of his own words and said unto the woman now we believe not because of thy saying for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. So her testimony really brought them to the point where they could hear Jesus preaching and teaching. And then once they heard the preaching and teaching, as a result, they also believed. But here we, we see, uh, uh, here we see faith, you know, the Word of God teaches us that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And so I, I pose this question to us. If faith comes by hearing the Word of God, are we a part of getting the Word out so those in the city who, who have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior can hear the Word? Uh, uh, be a part of seed planting and seed watering in order that God may, may give the increase. And so, you know, it's time for us to search ourselves and see, are we a part of the process? Are we helping it move along? Or are we hindering the process? Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. Just thank you for sharing with us and opening our, our hearts and our understanding as to what our responsibilities are as born-again believers. We love you, we praise you, we magnify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks and praises always. Well, again, friends, we thank you for joining us on today, and we look forward to having you in our next session. So until then, may God richly bless and keep you is our prayer. Hey!